Welcome to stage two. As we mentioned yesterday, this is a classic tour down under stage. And looking at the record books, not one for your out and out sprinter. The likes of Jay McCarthy, Juanjo Lobato, Diego Elisi and Tom Yelta Slagter have come out on top in Sterling in recent years. One would think then that today could be Peter Sagan's day? Let's find out. First things first though, and the matter of establishing the day's breakaway. Sure enough, the same riders in yesterday's break all put their hands up for another day up front. But today they also had the company of Movistar Neo Pro Jaime Castrillo. I will be indebted forever to the Movistar website for that flawless pronunciation. Jaime Castrillo. Dimension Data's Nicolas Delamini leads the King of the Mountains classification and didn't have to wait long for a chance to build his advantage. He was first to the summit of Tea Tree Gully Hill and after just 13 kilometers, his involvement in the breakaway was over with his KOM points safely in the bag. The peloton were happy to relax into the day, letting the lead expand upwards of six minutes. With three men still out front, they would hoover up the points and bonus seconds available at the first intermediate sprint at kilometer 45. Will Clark of EF Education First Drapak performing his first actual sprint for an intermediate sprint this week. He outmuscled Castrillo to the line. Halfway through the race and the riders have made their way onto the finishing circuit around Sterling, which they tackle three times. The last intermediate sprint of the day in Myler at kilometre 77 was taken again by Clark, who had accrued enough bonus seconds at this point to take the virtual race lead. Neither he nor UniSA Scott Bowden had any interest in stealing a march on the peloton today, however. With the sprints done and dusted, they both dropped back, with just Castrillo working away on his own now. With temperatures creeping towards 40 degrees centigrade, the challenge of sustaining a long-range move was a difficult one. Bahrain Merida had set to work at the front of the pack to start reducing the deficit. They had Jon and Gorka Itzagire hoping for a chance today at the finish. It's not been a great week for the FDJ team. Daniel Holgaard crashed out of the race on stage one and now Steve Morabito was on the deck. We understand that the medics had to pop his shoulder back into its socket before he then got back on his bike. Certainly a candidate for Matt's list of toughest riders. Meanwhile up front, the impetus from Barre Merida had cut our plucky Spaniards lead significantly. By the time they came round for the third and final lap, Castrillo was caught. And with the hilly circuit, it was a reduced bunch of around 50 riders now in the front group. This notoriously tricky uphill finish saw Anthony Rue light the touch paper and Daryl Impey followed up, closely followed by Sagan. It looked for a moment like a formality for the Triple World Champion, but the diminutive Caleb Ewan emerged from the Slovak slipstream and punched his way over the line with Impey showing fantastic endurance to hold his teammate's wheel for second. Oh, I'm out of breath right now. It was a, it was a super tough finish and it's one that we were, we were all so unsure about whether I'd make it to make it over the top, but you know, the boys, they put me in a perfect position again and you know, I just love seeing them, you know, back me 100% even after some uh, some results that we weren't weren't hoping for. Uh, yeah, so for them to back me on the stage, it probably doesn't even suit me. That means a lot. That victory puts Ewan into the yoga jersey for now. Andre Greipel found the pace a little too hot to handle today and was happy to roll in with the Gruppetto. It's fair to say that the first selection of the race has already been made, but with 47 riders still within 17 seconds of the leader, there are plenty of riders still in contention for overall honours. Join us tomorrow for Stage 3. This one goes from Glen Elg to Victor Harbour, and there's more potential for the sprinters. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and if you missed yesterday's Stage 1, you can click on the race report down here to catch up on the action.